In today's video, I bought $2,000 of airsoft guns you didn't know existed. I got the pistol they use in the Olympics, John Wick shotgun, electric pullback, gas pullback, and even a 12-shot shotgun powered by CO2 shells. For each airsoft gun in today's video, I'm going to be unboxing them and doing a full shooting test to see how they perform. All right, first up in the video, starting out very strong, we have a Barrett 50 cal from Matrix, and this is called the M82A1 CO2 powered bolt action sniper rifle. We have a very nice little simple logo on the top and pretty much just like a black box box obviously this thing has been through world war three it looks like but yeah we got a little logo right there from matrix and a couple of different warnings on the side right here Bruh. And as you can see, we already had our fun unboxing this guy for the first time but of course I have a small brain and I forgot to record the whole thing I don't know why, but basically we used a hammer instead of the knife because I left it upstairs and I'm too lazy to go get that. So uh, it's gonna be a hammer for this video. Hammer time. Go with the Without further ado, let's go ahead and show you guys what we get in the box. All right, so besides our basic instruction manual, it looks like we do have a bag of BBs right here and a cool little card right here that says certification of authenticity. Look at us, we are so fancy, moving up in life. <laughs> this thing is $143.10, super random price. Under $150 for a Barrett 50 cal, that's absolutely insane. I'm so curious how this guy will perform. You also get a speed loader in the box as well, and then it's some Allen keys and a super bad bag of BBs. This is just embarrassing. In my first take, I was saying these things don't even look like they were polished one time, as you guys could see right here yeah that is embarrassing they literally just look like straight out of the machine and not even polished like whatsoever and have the huge like line around them these are literally like one of the worst quality views i've ever seen but of course let's go ahead and pull this guy out and get our first impressions for what it is being a crazy bear 50 cal sniper rifle this guy's actually pretty lightweight that is probably because of the full plastic design but i guess it's only 143 dollars so can't really complain about that all righty we have this guy all put together and it's uh, definitely a lot bigger in this form than it was in the box but i mainly have two big concerns with this guy and one of those is the magazine itself. This guy is a mid cap as well, and it's super weird. The actual like way to load it up is kind of more of like an oval shape than a circle itself. I'm a little afraid if this guy will actually even feed. If you come back here to the back part of it, it literally has a fake way to load up BBs where you normally would a high cap magazine, but there is no like windy thing at the bottom. So it is a mid cap magazine, but they maybe decide to use like the same magazine shell for like this one versus another one that actually is a high cap magazine. And you know what though? That's typically how the bull goes but believe it or not those aren't even the main issues i have with the magazine itself one of the very first times i load this guy up and try to get the magazine in place it actually snapped off easily this little plastic piece that actually helps load up the magazine into the actual mag wall itself so uh i'm not even sure if we're gonna be able to shoot this guy so besides the magazine absolutely just breaking the main concern i have with this guy is actually how to load up these co2 cartridges let me tell you they do not make it easy to load it up you're gonna need to take this pin out of the front right there and then this pin out the back right there and then the whole upper assembly will actually slide off. I had to take a pair of pliers and absolutely yank the spring guide system up so it was actually out of place from the other pieces. And then now take off a whole bunch of other pieces and then take off all this stuff until finally you get to the actual little cylinder where you actually can put the CO2 cartridge in. It's definitely so much work just to get a simple CO2 cartridge in a CO2 airsoft gun. I've never seen a system like this so complicated. But without further ado, we do have a Barrett 50 cal CO2 powered sniper rifle. So let's go ahead and test it out. <laughs> Let's see what this guy Kornigov's at. Damn! 480.6 FPS with 0.20s and 2.15 joules. Damn, that's actually shooting pretty hot. All right, boys, we about to bring chair softing to a whole new level. Let's get this bread. Oh, that's awkward. <laughs> After that lip thing broke off, I'm kind of in an awkward spot here with this magazine. There we go, caught one. This thing actually gets the target pretty damn quick. Damn. This guy's angry. Keep in mind, this uh, scope isn't zeroed in, so I'm trying my best here. Oh, that was a little bit bad. Yikes. It's getting worse by the minute. Ha, that last one was pretty damn good. Keeping in mind my absolutely mediocre aim and uh, the scope not being zeroed in, this is actually a decently impressive little grouping right here. Definitely not too shabby for $140 Barrett 50 cal sniper rifle. It's looking like this guy has no tape, so unfortunately we don't get to use our hammer. You're still holding on. Let go. All right, but we got that Apple slide off box. Let's check this guy out. 
Oh, I probably should have mentioned the name. This is the 6mm Pro Shop Foul Carbine Electric Blowback Airsoft Rifle. Let's check this guy out. Ooh. All right. So, uh, well, apparently this is called the LK58. Uh, who knows why they make up these names? Is it the LK58? Is it a foul? Who knows? But of course, let's get to our foul here. I've always wanted to own one of these. And the price isn't actually too bad either. So I'm pretty curious to see how this guy will shoot. This is the blowback system right here. Sounds pretty satisfying. The overall functionality of this guy is pretty simple. It's just like a standard Airsoft AEG. So the battery does go in this little stock right here. You have to take off the butt plate itself. And then you'll have access to the little battery connector right there. This guy mainly has two cool things about it. Other than that, it's pretty much like a standard Airsoft AEG. For one, it's a foul. So there is some cool little unique factors that you kind of don't really see on other Airsoft guns, such as the little fire slick right there with a pretty unique look and a really nice sound as well. You do have safe semi-automatic and full auto with this guy. And a super crazy looking like mag release. Weird like metal like circle kind of thing, Mabob, for this guy to actually release the magazines. Never seen one like that before. The magazine itself is a high cap. This is how much it holds right there. Damn, son. It has a traditional winding system at the bottom down there, but a super hard latch to actually release to get in the BBs at the top. I mean, I don't really have long nails by any means, but damn, I have to get like a flathead screwdriver just to open up that little latch. And the way to actually get this magazine, it is actually pretty cool and definitely pretty satisfying to do as well. Check this out. If we take the bolt and actually switch it backward, that is actually the location of the hop up right there. And then of course, the last cool thing about this guy is actually the electric blowback function. So with that said guys, let's go ahead and test out that system right now and corner got this guy and do a little shooting test. All right, not too shabby. 365.8 FPS with 1.24 joules. Gotta love that electric kickback too. Now it's time for the RPS. Wow, pretty impressive RPS for a electric blowback. 13.1 is what we got right there. This is a foul after all, so let's try a little range test further back at about 100 feet with this guy. Alrighty, so 100 feet with the foul, actually not too bad relatively to, uh, you know, any other $200 airsoft rifle. We got a decent amount in the target itself and a couple actually on the uh, borderline between the yellow and the red right there. So not overall too bad. Now let's say we got this guy in a CQB environment. Let's actually test out the semi mac response and see how that is. Considering this guy is using an 8.4 volt and it's electric blowback, the semi mac response is actually pretty impressive. What about that full auto? Let's check it out. Let's see how fast we get the targets down. Nice. What? Homie just started shooting without him even doing anything. That's weird. All right, this guy obviously gives it away right off the bat what it is, but this is a super nice box. Definitely a huge step up from the previous two, at least for the box quality with this guy. And this is the Token Rui Scorpion Mod M. We got another Apple slide off box. Let's check it out. Ooh. Ooh, now that looks sick. Obviously, the airsoft gun itself looks super cool, but weirdly enough, the first thing I noticed is on the magazine. Usually, the magazine would end like right here and just have like a standard little top, but this guy has like a weird top where it like curves upward at an angle. That is really interesting, honestly. Looks like it is a high cap magazine as well, and the BBs go at this top little section right there. Kind of interesting. They actually include different sections of M lock you can actually put on your airsoft scorpion. They definitely were thinking when they made this bad boy. And just before I miss it up here in this section, we do have a little owner's manner right here. Definitely pretty nice. And I love these little cartoons they always put on the token room. Manuals. Bro, look at that guy. Uh, what the f this guy is fully electric, but it does actually have a little fake bolt. So if you go ahead and pull that back, there's not really a use case scenario, obviously, but there is the section where the hop up is stored at the top right there. And then right now we're in safe mode, which is the middle position. And then this way, when you're going to the red 20, that is full auto. And then all the way to the backward position, that is some Mac when you see that little one right there. But real quick, before we go ahead and shoot this guy, let's go ahead and talk about where the heck the battery goes. The actual motor positioning of this guy is actually pretty unique. So it doesn't actually have to be in the grip like most AEG. So that's actually where the battery goes. So to get the battery actually in and out, it's actually pretty interesting 
interesting. So there's a little piece down here. All I have to do is turn that slightly and then this little end cap actually will come on out. And weirdly enough, this is like one of the only airsoft guns that has like a proprietary like battery, but it did not come with the actual battery or the charger itself. So that was super unfortunate. And it's pretty damn expensive as well. Overrated as f in my opinion, I mean. So that sucked. And then to get the rest of the system to work, all you have to do is place the battery actually in the adapter itself. And then you go ahead and just put this guy with the battery in the grip and then go ahead and put on your end piece and then you're ready to go. Definitely not going to be the highest FPS of video. This guy's shooting 253.9 FPS with 0 0.6 joules. Let's test the RPS out now. Yeah, not too good, but uh, you know, it could be worse. About nine rounds per second. Let's do a little bit of a closer range test and we'll scoot back to 100 feet as well. This guy sounds so cute when it shoots just a little, little guy. It's like, doop, doop. <laughs> so if you're playing at a CQB field and are indoors and are going for some headshots, this guy will absolutely smoke your target at about 50 feet. But now let's go ahead and really test this guy and go back to 100 feet. Not too shabby for 100 feet. We only missed like one or two shots off the target. All the rest within the little target itself. Not too bad for this little guy. Pretty impressive, little dude. Just uh, super whiny and definitely not the best response. But how's that for auto? Let's test it out. I would say actually full auto is doable on the field. You know, you're not going to need some crazy RPS really on the field. But yeah, uh, cinematic response is definitely not the best. I definitely wish you could put a bigger battery in this guy. Because this thing, if it shot really fast, cinematic response would definitely be pretty insane. <laughs> BBs aren't quite strong enough to get some of the targets down on the first shot. I do like how lightweight this guy is and easy it is to maneuver. It definitely makes it pretty easy getting to your next target. Yeah, follow is definitely the way to go with this guy. All right, next up we have a super weird looking airsoft box. The proportions are very interesting. It's like not very long and the sides are super high. So far in the video, I'm definitely most excited about this guy. This is the APS Striker Street Sweeper Airsoft CO2 Shotgun. And unfortunately, I don't think we're gonna have to use you, my friend. <laughs> got a little nice handle up here. Okay, very professional. Let's see what we got. Little owner's manual. Ooh, yeah, that's sick. Dude, I am so excited to shoot this. This is crazy. How do you get the stock down, dude? Maybe it's this pin thing? Let's just go ahead and pull that and see what happens. No, it's not that. Oh, I'm dumb, dude. It's a button right here on the end. <laughs> that's embarrassing. This is probably like one of the sickest airsoft shotguns I've ever seen. And don't worry guys, we got plenty of airsoft shells to shoot with this guy as well. This guy could definitely look a little bit intense, but it's actually pretty simple in how it actually is used. There is the safety location right there next to the trigger, very convenient. It's got a really nice click when you actually pull the trigger as well. Super standard little iron sight. It's got a huge triangle design at the front. This guy does have a built-in foregrip at the front right there. Very helpful when shooting this guy and also a little sling mount right there at the top. And the way to load this guy up is pretty simple. There's a huge like drum mag sonar guy right there. All you have to do is take this little latch and bring it downward. And then I'll give you access to actually where to put the shotgun shells. And yes, the shells for this guy are pretty expensive, but Bruh. they are pretty cool. So let's go ahead and check those guys out right now. You're gonna need a little system to actually be able to load these guys up with CO2. That's right, your standard green gas cans actually won't work with these guys. So if you get your special little adapter right there and then load up a little CO2 cartridge to that, these CO2 shells have a little chamber built in, so all you have to do is load it up at the top right there. And then next up, you have a little separate bag of these little plastic kind of things. These guys actually go on top of that little valve to load up the CO2, and then that's actually where the BBs are actually fed up into the shotgun shell itself. And then however you can, you're gonna want to block off the little exit for the BBs to escape at the top. 
Traditionally, usually there is a little kind of cardboard or plastic piece people put right there. And then to get the shotgun chills out, obviously you could just like wiggle them out like that. But this guy actually has a more fun way of doing it. There's a little black latch at the top right there. All you have to do is pull that back. And as you can see, it is spring loaded. Once you go ahead and do that, there will be a metal piece that just basically just like yeets the shotgun chill out of the system. <laughs> Definitely a lot more satisfying doing it that way. Without further ado, guys, that's pretty much it with this guy. It's pretty simple, looks pretty badass, but let's go ahead and shoot this guy and see how it does. Let's just do one test shot and see how this guy performs. <laughs> that's pretty sick. All right, now let's shoot the other seven shots. Uh oh, that's not good. <laughs> what? All right, this guy is maybe not the best performance as you just saw, just because of the shell system. It's just kind of super inconsistent in my opinion, but overall, definitely pretty fun to shoot. And this guy is definitely unique, I'll say that. The shooting test didn't go too well with this guy, but now we have this speed shooting down the targets test, and I think this guy will shine during this one. Right, here we go. <laughs> Absolutely evaporated that target. Ah! Well, let's go ahead and see how fast we can get down all the targets. Oh, that just like hit the target and didn't even put it down, damn. <laughs> Finally! This guy evaporates the targets. <laughs> Alright guys, we're unboxing a crazy bunch of different airsoft guns in today's video, but this one I'm the most excited about. I'm so curious how this guy will actually shoot and perform and even just look. This guy is the Maruzen APS-3 Extreme Shooting Handgun. And this guy is the blue edition, so pretty fancy. You can see a little picture of it right there. Obviously, if you already couldn't tell from the box right there. It looks like the plastic carrying case is surrounded by some cardboard, so we're gonna have to pull up on this little, like, tab, I guess. Pretty cool. Pretty simple box. We have little like red lashes at the front with the branding from Ruzin, and then we have the little APS logo right there. All right, I'm so curious to see how this guy looks and feels. Let's see how it is. Ooh, dude, look at this thing. This actually might be one of the or the craziest airsoft gun I've ever seen. I could be totally wrong with this, but isn't this the actual like replica of the gun they use in the Olympics for that one event? I think it's like a 22 caliber and shoot these like targets at a crazy range of these things with like these crazy forms of how they shoot it with this like bent arm kind of thing going on. I'll show you guys some pictures right now. It's absolutely insane. All right, I'm super excited to get my first impressions of how this guy feels. Let's go ahead and pick it up and see what it feels like. Ooh, spicy. The first thing I noticed is obviously this guy's a little bit of a more of a front heavy design. Obviously it has a predominantly metal design up here and then obviously this huge plastic grip back here. All right, let me see how this feels. This is insane. Whoa, okay. This is gonna sound a little cheesy, but this grip is like so ergonomically designed. It almost makes the airsoft gun feel like an extension of like your hand and arm now. It's like such a crazy design for the grip. It just makes you feel like you're one with it. It's insane. At first I thought this guy was gonna be powered by gas or even like maybe spring, but it works in a way I've never seen an airsoft gun work before. To get this guy ready to shoot, you're gonna go ahead and go up here to the button at the top and make sure it is off safe. Then there's this little silver piece at the bottom. You're gonna wanna go ahead and pull that all the way to the top position. Now there is a little hole at the top right there. That's actually where the BBs get loaded up to. And then now go to the bottom and there's this huge silver latch at the bottom. Go ahead and pull that down. Make sure you go all the way to the end right there. And then once you start bringing this guy back to the original position, there is some resistance. Right there, you're actually feeling the air actually get built up in this little blue tube. And then now you're ready to fire it after you lower this little silver latch. 
And let me tell you, this has one of the sickest feeling triggers I've ever felt. You can bring it all the way to the back position and then there's a tiny little section where it's able to shoot. Definitely one of the coolest mechanisms to shoot an airsoft pistol I've ever seen. And the last but not least, before we actually go ahead and shoot this guy, let's go ahead and talk about how the BBs are loaded. Like most airsoft pistols, the magazine is usually at the bottom when it's loaded up, but this guy has no magazine down there, so where the heck do you load the BB? Well, this guy is a very special little system at the top right here. You can almost miss it. I had to look up like videos on how to actually use this guy because I had no idea. There's a little black plastic piece at the top right there. You're gonna wanna go ahead and press this little spring button right there. That will release the magazine from the body itself. And this is literally the whole magazine itself. It's just this tiny little plastic piece. You go ahead and take the little spring system, load it all the way back, lock it at the lower position, and then load the BBs in that little hole right there. It definitely doesn't have the craziest BB capacity. It only holds like a few BBs. And then to load this back up in the body, there is a little plastic hook at the back or position. Make sure that is lined up with that little black box at the back. And then there is a the little button right there. You're gonna wanna go ahead and press that and then latch it back into place. And that's how you load this guy up. Definitely a very unique system. Definitely the most curious about this guy's FPS. I'm really not sure where it's gonna chronograph out. We'll check it out right now. Gotta do it like the professionals, you know what I mean? <laughs> Okay, go okay, not too bad. 281.8 FPS with 0.74 joules. Let's do a second one just in case. And then as you can see, the BB actually will come into this little hole right here from the magazine. Pretty neat little system. Yep, pretty much the same. This one is about 270 FPS with 0.68 joules. Definitely not the best FPS, but it's doable to hit some long range targets with this guy still with that FPS. I have no idea what the actual range is going to be for this guy. So let's just try it first at a super short range and then we'll scoop back if it's pretty good at this range. Here goes nothing. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, actually pretty impressive. I figured this guy would be decent, but yeah, that's really accurate. Sweet. Definitely pretty fun to shoot this like a fake Olympian or something like that <laughs> with this weird hand motion. Nice. This guy's really good. Nice. Ooh, bullseye. Wow, yeah, that is uh, pretty impressive. Let's do another five shots a little bit further back and then let's actually try to test this guy at 100 feet and see how it does. Ooh, yeah, range is not the best with this guy. Let's see if we aim a little bit up, let's see how that goes. All right, a little bit better. Aiming at the top of the target, we could actually hit the middle. All right, so pretty accurate. Just, yeah, the range is pretty bad. I like how with this trigger has like a like a dead space and then the very little tiny last little bit is where you pull it. It's pretty nice. Oh, that was bad. Yeah, definitely probably are not going to be in the Olympics anytime soon. Ooh, I think that was a bullseye. Or at least it had to be close. That was a nasty shot. With this guy, this range, probably about like... 50, 60 feet away. You gotta aim just above the target for a good shot. Well, there's all our hopes and dreams of getting a shot in at 100 feet with this guy. I could definitely tell this thing's all about pretty much like stability with your arm. If it is perfectly stable, then you're gonna get a good shot in if you know where to aim. But if you have any type of little bit of wobble, yeah, you're not getting a good shot in. Ooh, I think that was in the yellow. All right, so obviously I need to work on my aim a little bit. We did get a couple good ones in the red and one on the yellow as well. This one's definitely going to be satisfying with this test. Ooh, that's nice. Ooh, this is the most like rewarding I've ever shot an airsoft gun. It's so satisfying to get the targets down. Ha ha! This guy is so accurate, even shooting it basically like sideways is still possible. That's crazy. All right, guys, just like that Scorpion, we can see what this guy is right off the bat with the packaging. This guy is the Tokimui KSG Gas Shotgun. And this guy comes in at $310. Hey, this is probably one of my favorite designed airsoft boxes I've ever seen. It has all these crazy like numbers and signs and details about the airsoft gun itself to kind of make it look a little bit more of a futuristic design. This is again a slide off box. Let's see what this guy looks like. 
Ooh, that is a sick presentation. <laughs> and real quick, before we unstrap this bad boy, let's actually go ahead and see what the gas tank looks like. So there's the shell right there. It looks like it holds about 30 rounds. Let's go ahead now and check out the gas tank. Ooh. <laughs> So this guy actually functions differently than the previous shotgun we got, the Street Sweeper. That one was actually powered by the shells themselves had the gas in it. Now this one, the shells actually do not have the gases. As you can see, there's no way to load it up. But rather, this actual gas tank is the way you actually load the gas in right there. So pretty cool design. I actually do prefer this type of design just because loading these shells individually is kind of annoying. So it's kind of nice to have actually all the gas in like a little chamber like this. But now let's go ahead and unstrap this guy and just get a little bit of a better idea on how this guy feels. Ooh. Well, that's stuck to my glove. Bruh. Get away from me. So the first thing I do notice is it is a hybrid and plastic design. And the way this guy is actually pretty nice. It's not too heavy and not too light. Ooh, that's satisfying. Ooh. Essentially, this guy is pretty much just like a super fancy pump action shotgun, but it does have some really cool features that no other shotgun really has. So let's go over those real quick. So like most airsoft guns, this guy does try to mimic the real steel version, but there are some things it does fall short on that they had to do with the airsoft one. And that's actually when it comes to the loading mechanism of this guy. So it does actually use the similar or same loading mechanism that the real steel one does, but it works in a little bit of a different way. There are two separate actual chambers to actually be able to shoot from this guy, which is really unique for a shotgun. The real steel one, you're able to actually load shells into each chamber and they're both functional. So with this little latch down here, you can actually select which chamber you actually want to fire from going from left to right. But with the airsoft one, it doesn't really do anything. It's mainly just for looks. It obviously does have a sound when you click it back and forth but it doesn't really do anything. So the right side or the right chamber of this guy is the one that is actually functional. So if we load up our 30 round shell into the right side, and then of course, make sure our gas chambers all load up with gas. I'll show you guys where this actually goes in a minute. Pump back the action and it's all ready to go if it's off safety. And then when you are out of that shell, there is these little fins at the bottom right there where you actually press. When you do reload, you just basically pull that little fin and the shotgun shell will fall out. One thing different about the left chamber than the right one, besides it being non-functional, is you can actually load up to two different shells in there as well. The way I think about the left chamber is it is kind of like a little storage area for them until you're ready to load them up into the right chamber for it to actually fire. And the final thing before this guy, before we go ahead and shoot it, is where the heck does the green gas get stored? Well, like we saw in our unboxing, the green gas is stored in this little chamber right here. But to access where that actually goes, you're going to need to go to the back part where the stock is and take off the little butt pad back there. And then as you can see, there's a crazy little mechanism in there. And then you go ahead and take your chamber and place it up here. Make sure it is the right way and then click it in. But without further ado, guys, we got a gas KSG. We got to go test it out. So this guy is a try shot after all, so the cartographing uh, might not be very good, but we'll try our best. Come on, man. Yeah, definitely not gonna work out. That says 20.6 FPS with zero joules and 322.8 RPS. Probably not the most realistic numbers. I started to notice it wasn't shooting right. BBs were breaking before leaving the barrel. I wasn't sure what the problem was until this finally happened. Bruh. Jeez, well, fun fact, you can see the BBs impacting right there on the side. You actually cannot shoot it with the orange chip that comes installed with this guy. I was literally just like shooting it and it was like breaking the BBs apart. I was so confused what I did wrong. The BBs actually hit the actual edges of the orange tip. That's crazy. All right, well, first off, this guy shoots way better than the last shotgun. Weirdly, a lot of BBs are kind of going to the left side. Even I was aiming with the iron sights honestly over here as well, and they still were kind of going to the left. So not sure what's up with that, but nevertheless, very tight grouping on the target. All right, let's scoot a little bit back and see how this guy does at a little bit of a further distance. Yeah, it's kind of shooting to the left, weird. guy is such a satisfying pump action sound. Mm. 
Bro, again? I don't know why these BBs love the left side. Aiming the iron sights up with this section right here is on the actual edge of the target. And they're still going to the left side. I don't know what's going on. Homie is definitely left-handed. Taking in all the considerations, definitely not the worst grouping for a shotgun. If you're in a close range CQB field, this is definitely going to be one of my first choices. Just check this out. Not too bad. Definitely know why John Wick chose this guy. Super fast action as well. You could get so many rounds off so quick. Uh oh, new shell. All right, now let's just go for ultimate speed and see how fast we can get them down. Yeah, that's nice. All right, guys, I know we've shot lots of crazy airsoft guns in today's video, but this guy might be the craziest. I'm a little confused on this guy's name, but uh, bear with me. On the website, it says this guy is called the KTC Tech 9 slash KGB 9 machine gas blowback pistol. But on the box, this guy, it says this guy is called the KTC KT101. And maybe it's like made from or the parent company is Kingdom Technology. So no idea. <laughs> but let's just go with this guy is called the Tech 9. Pretty simple box. It's basically just a cardboard box with the logos and the name of this guy on the top. Let's see what this guy looks like. Got the pretty simple owner's manual right here, and this is what comes in the box. Pretty simple stuff. It looks like there's just the gas blowback magazine right here. And the gas actually goes at the top right here next to the release valve. This is how much this guy holds right here. It is a double stack design. Pretty heavy magazine too. Ooh. I don't know if you guys have played much Counter-Strike, but that is the first thing that comes to mind when seeing this guy. Enemy spotted. When I used to play CSGO, I remember this used to be a very popular gun during the save rounds on the T side. So pretty cool to actually be able to see this guy in person and be able to shoot it. This guy is a hybrid metal and plastic design. Mainly all the metal coming from up here and then all this lower grip and as well as the maggle section is all plastic. But overall, a nice little feel to this guy. It's not too heavy, not too light. But I'm sure we'll add lots of weight once you add in this magazine because this magazine is pretty heavy. Yeah, that basically is like the same weight as the Urza gun itself. That is crazy. Overall... This guy's pretty simple. We have a pretty traditional iron sight in the back as well as the front. Then it's left those bad boys blank. And then to operate this guy, it's really simple. All you have to do is put in the magazine that's fully loaded with gas and BBs and pull back the bolt right here. They give you these really cool like cutout circles on the front of the airsoft gun right there. So that's kind of the only cool like really flashy unique design on this guy. Other than that, it's pretty simple. But for the real steel version, I'm guessing those are just little holes to kind of help mitigate some of the heat that goes on with the barrel when you shoot this guy. There's two little small things I do want to mention real quick before we go on and shoot this guy because obviously the highlight with this guy is going to be a how it shoots, not really on how it looks or feels. And the first of those is actually where the hop up is located. So if you pull back the bolt on the top right there, it is actually located in the right side of the barrel right there. Actually a pretty good spot for it. Honestly, a lot of these these gas like guns have these super weird spots for the hop up and just make it super inaccessible. And this is definitely a very accessible spot in my opinion. So it definitely makes it a lot easier to adjust your hop up. And the last thing is actually where the fire select is located. It does indeed have one. It's actually down here by the trigger kind of under the body itself. All right, you got the TAC-9 chronograph up next. Let's see how this guy does. Looks like we're getting right below 300 FPS at 282.4 FPS with 0.74 joules. And then the four, let's check out what we're working with. Wow, pretty impressive for a gas blowback. About 17.4 rounds per second. Oh yeah. We're definitely gonna have lots of fun with this guy. All right, tech now, let's see what you got. Pretty decent blowback as well. Don't mind those two shots or that one over there. I just had a little oopsie, you know what I mean? But all the other shots, definitely pretty solid in the middle of the target. We even got pretty much a bullseye too. All right, but let's actually give this guy quite a bit of a challenge and scoot back even further and see if we can hit some good shots on the target. Oh. Huh. 
weird this guy definitely had some kind of weird shots to the right and some shots kind of lower as well but there was a good group of like five to seven in there that were pretty accurate but the rest of them not so consistent but overall definitely doable at that range let's see if we can hit one shot all the way back here Kinda doable, I wouldn't trust it at this range though. But where this guy really shines is it's semi-mac response and it's full auto, let's check those out. Bro, they're both sideways. Let's see how I got this. <laughs> Bro. All right, this guy's just gonna, you know what I mean? All right, that was a little embarrassing. Let's try one more time. What? <laughs> Damn, that guy's strong. I think I know what we're doing wrong. We're not on full auto. <laughs> well, I didn't get them all down, but that was pretty sick. What? That looks sick, but this guy's not feeding BBs whatsoever. Oh, it's got that like weak spring thing going on.